Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing our eSword tutorial series and we're going to be seeing how to actually use Strong's numbers and our Strong's concordance within eSword. Now, if you haven't watched the other tutorials, I highly recommend you go back and see that because we've already learned how to use the search function in eSword. That's gonna be important for today's video. And we've already learned how to download many free resources like Strong's concordance. And so you wanna make sure that you go back and watch those videos so you understand what we're doing today. But we're going to be using a Strong's Concordance and Strong's Numbers today within eSword. Now, if you have been studying the Bible for a long time, maybe since before Bible study programs were a thing, chances are you've got a giant hardback book called a Strong's Concordance on your shelf. I know that I've got a few and I know that my parents did uh, when I was a kid. And man, I highly suggest having one of those. Um, you really ought to know how to use a Strong's Concordance to study your Bible just in book form because that is what preachers have used for a long time to study the Bible and to search words and just to see where they're at. But now that we have these Bible study programs that make searching words and cross-references uh, so much easier and makes it so much quicker, let's see how to actually use our Strong's numbers within eSword to search different roots of words. Now I've got eSword up and like I said, I've already got different things installed like my Strong's Concordance. And if I go over to dictionaries, my dictionaries tab, it might not be over here for you. If it's not, all you want to do is go up here to the top and hit on the little window that has a D in it. That stands for dictionaries. And what it's going to do is maximize your dictionary tab. And you can see I've got my Webster's, Schofield, KJV concordance and my strongs. But that's not what I'm gonna to use today. I actually wanna show you an easier way to use the strongs numbers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually download a Bible called KJV Plus. Now, eSword may have already came with that uh, installed. I doubt it. I haven't installed uh, eSword for a while. So if you don't have this tab called KJV Plus, um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go up to download and go to Bibles. And you're going to see all of these ones that are available. And we're going to go to KJV and you're going to see KJV Plus. Make sure that you've got KJV Plus installed. If it's not installed, all you have to do is click on the blue hyperlink and it will immediately begin to install and you'll probably have to restart eSword, but then it'll be available right here in your Bibles window. So I've got my KJV open, and what am I studying today? Well, we've been using 2 Timothy 2 for these tutorials, so we'll just continue with that. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we're studying the word study today. So let's go ahead and 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 we want, we've already searched with our Bible study uh uh, Bible study search window where it's used. Uh, we can highlight it and we can right click and quick search the entire Bible and see that study is used only three times in the scripture. But maybe I want to see what is the word that is translated study here in 2 Timothy 2.15. I go to my KJV plus tab. I'm still in 2 Timothy 2.15. Now I could go to parallel if I wanted to and I could add my KJV. I've got my Hungarian Bible up here because I'm a missionary. I can hit KJV plus and I can have those in parallel, but, but I don't need that. I just need this tab and I go to 2 Timothy 2.15. It would be annoying to read the Bible with all of these hyperlinks, but for now I'm just using it for reference, right? So I go to the word study and it's got this number beside it. The Strong's number is G4704. That is the word that is translated from Greek to the English word study. If I highlight or rather hover my cursor over that number, I'm going to see the Greek word, how it's spelled, how it's pronounced. And then I'm going to see a brief definition uh, that is from the Strong's Hebrew and Greek dictionary. So here it says to use speed, that is to make effort, be prompt or earnest. So that's, by the way, that's just a brief definition. And these definitions, let me just remind you, Bible student, are not inspired by God. They're written by a man and they're only used as a resource to study the Bible. And so I would encourage you to never use Greek or Hebrew to correct, quote unquote, or change what God has preserved for you faithfully over thousands of years in your English Bible. But we're not trying to correct. We're just trying to get more information. And so we see this G4704 is the 
Strong's number for whatever word, however you pronounce spudazo, I don't know, I don't speak Greek, that is the word that's translated here. But I want to see if that word was translated as another English word somewhere else, because that would be interesting. And so what I can do is I can go up to the search function, right? Remember this from a couple of videos ago? If you're not aware how to use this in detail, go watch that video. And what I can do is I can type in that number, not the word study, but the Strong's number, G4704. G4704, I type it in. I've got KJV plus highlight. If I select KJV and search it, it's not gonna bring anything up because that's not a word that's in the Bible. But KJV plus is my KJV with Strong's numbers. I search it and check it out. I've got more than three references. Actually, that word study is also translated as forward in Galatians 2 and endeavoring in Ephesians 4 and diligence in 2 Timothy 4, 9. And so that's interesting to me. Now, what I'm not going to do, that this isn't a homiletics class video, but what I'm never going to do is correct the Bible and say, well, the only time that this Greek word was translated study was in 2 Timothy 2.15, so that must be a mistake. Of course I would never do that. I'm trusting the word of God to tell me what it means. If it's only translated study in 2 Timothy 2.15, then that tells me something about the word. But it also tells me when I look at these other translations, diligence and endeavor and diligent, what it tells me is more... Uh, things that have to do with studying because study requires diligence, right? When it says, when the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God, it doesn't say briefly read the Bible two minutes a day to, sh to show thyself approved unto the God, right? It says study. And when I see the other ways God, God translated the word from Greek to English, he uses words like endeavor and diligence. And so I know that if I want to be approved unto God, I have to study his word and that is going to take diligence and it's going to take Hebrews 4.11 labor, which of course, if I just keep reading 2 Timothy 2.15 in English, the language I know, I know that it takes time because it says study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And so the Bible defines itself, but if I want to use the Strong's words, I'm going to use this KJV plus feature. Now, let's do a different verse. Let's just go to like John 3, 16. I go over here to the left side, click on John chapter 3, and here's verse 16 with my red letters. I select it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if I go up to my KJV plus, there's all of my Strong's words, and I can go to... Let's go to only begotten. How about that? Only begotten son. So there you go. You've got your Greek word when I hover over it, but let's search it. Let's go to the search function. What is our number? G3439. And then I search that in my KJV plus, and now I've got every time that Greek word was translated into English. Only, only begotten only child. And so so that's we we can see the other ways that it was translated. I'm never seeking to correct the English. Of course, I'm just seeking to get more clarity on ways God himself translated that word. Now, it's important to know if you're not as familiar with Strong's Concordance or you haven't been using it for a long time, that the reason the word the, the, the reason that we have a G in front of this number is because that's Greek. The New Testament was translated from Greek, right? And the Old Testament was Hebrew. And so those words are going to be uh um the, the, those those words are going to start with the letter H for their number. So you might be wondering when I search for God, like if I search G2316, why don't I get any Old Testament hits? Well, that's because that was the Greek word. If I go to the Old Testament, let's go to Genesis. Still in my KJV+, plus, I go to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, the Hebrew word for in the beginning is H7225, right? And so obviously, if you look at the, the spelling and the pronunciation there, that's a Hebrew word. And so that Strong's number is going to start with an H because it's a Hebrew word. So it's a, it's a dictionary for Hebrew and Greek words. And remember, those definitions that we're seeing are not uh, inspired, but they can be very helpful. We're letting the Word of God tell us what the Word of God means, but we can use those Strong's numbers and Strong words within ESORD to help give us some further clarity.
Now, I hope that was helpful to you in learning how to use the Strong's numbers and your Strong's concordance within eSword. In the next couple of videos that I'm going to be releasing, we're going to see other resources within eSword that you might find helpful in your Bible study or sermon preparation. So make sure you give me a subscribe and a follow and hit the notification bell so that you know when those videos are coming. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me this time. God bless.